uh, vehicle crashworthiness and the importance of the vehicle crashworthiness in the vehicle design and some test requirements, some test assessors, and the importance of the finite element analysis. And also uh, would like to give you some kind of clues why you are doing uh, finite element analysis as a skill centers. So uh, thank you very much for your attendance. Uh, if you have any questions, you can directly stop me. If you don't want to, uh, we can go on after I present the webinar. So as I told you, our topics are this ones today. I uh, would like to mention some specific items in terms of testing standards like FMVSS, NCAP, and IHS, not only for United States, but also whole of the world. Uh, on the other hand, I uh, would like to give some kind of vision about the product design before showing vehicle design to you, because at the end of the day, we, will, we need to understand what is the point of crashworthiness in a product design, especially in vehicle design, because also crashworthiness is used for different kinds of products like uh, aerospace or satellites. So therefore, today, we would like to focus on only vehicle designs. So let me start with the what crashworthiness is. So I guess everyone is familiar with the crash word, what crashworthiness is. So I'm not going to uh, mention you a new uh, information or new definition of the crashworthiness, but would like to give some kind of uh, very bite-sized uh, information to, to be on the same page and to be aligned for the rest of the webinar. So crashworthiness is not only related with maintaining the structural deformation of the vehicle, but also keep occupant safety and also pedestrian protection in good shapes without not so much injury, without any deaths or without any loss during the accidents. Designers and developers create vehicles for occupant safety with controlling crashworthiness and also managing the crash paths during the accident, accident to maintain the human health on the vehicle. So optimum, well, what is optimum crash pulse? Optimum crash pulse is usually with initial high peaks and slowly lowering curve behavior is the most expected and also preferred one in terms of crash worthiness engineers. We have also pedestrian protection in this area. Pedestrian protection is also related with energy efficiency of the vehicle front end, including metal and also plastic components like front bumper fascia, bonnet, air ducts, headlamps, crash cans, and lower leg stiffeners. So as a result, the aim of crashworthiness is to maintain sufficient survival spaces for occupants with reducing vehicle intrusions. You can see that in the uh, crash tests, we are putting dummies in the vehicles and also we are using some kind of impactors for the pedestrian protection representative tests. So on the other hand, we have to have a clear energy absorption to manage the crash loads, even if it is coming from for uh, structural components like side rails or maybe dash or other structural components or metal components of the vehicle, but also from front bumper fascia to the crash cans as, a, as putting some kind of energy absorbers like high energy absorption materials uh, like foams or plastics. Then after crash worthiness definition, I would like to inform you about the product design because the, the knowledge of the product design is important to understand what vehicle design is first. So a product can be published in a market for customers with having suitable marketing information and which has a result of sales and gains money. But at the end, each product needs to provide a benefit for the customer. So if a customer does not have any kind of benefit from this product, then they will not buy it. In terms of product design perspective, I can say that a product design is related with cost and price. Because at the end of the day, 
you have to be sure about all your expenses and you have to gain, you, you have to define a cost price and the uh, product price and your consumers needs to buy your products and this maintains you some revenue and some profits. It is not only for the automotive industry, but also for all industries. If they would like to have a product design, they would like to calculate all this item. To create a product needs some attributes on the other hand to be more competitive with the rivals because you, ha you have to know that your product will be competitor as your rivals and you have to sell it. And this needs some investment. And this investment is, I will also tell you about that, the product development. Consumers always value the product according to, the, to its attributes. As I told you in the previous page, these attributes can be known as the benefits of the product. What vehicle development, as I told you, is a very dominant and important area in terms of vehicle design. So automotive vehicle design is, has total contribution of different departments. In that area, vehicle development is the most dominant department during the vehicle design because it owns the vehicle, this department owns the vehicle and shapes the vehicle according to inputs and outputs of other departments, such as homologation teams, marketing teams, and service teams. So, the development department uses metrics called vehicle attributes to meet the development targets in, in terms of customer satisfaction. So they're doing their development and they're saying that, oh, we are meeting targets or we are not meeting targets, we have to develop more. So they're using the metrics in terms of customer satisfaction and this is called vehicle attributes for them. So, the crash worthiness is also one of the part of the vehicle attributes and it was defined in the regulatory area previously and normally the vehicle has lots of different attributes like vehicle dynamics, package, MVH, strength and durability, appearance and cost of ownership for the customer satisfaction. In terms of regulatory perspective, it has crash worthiness and emissions and also it has some corporate attributes as well. So in the beginning, as you might understand that crashworthiness is located in the regulatory area, which is a must to meet the targets for the vehicle companies. But after late 1990s, with publishment of the official publishment of the Eurenke and also uh, different kind of marketing strategies, crashworthiness Crashworthiness began to be a part of customer satisfaction areas because the customers were getting increased knowledge in terms of vehicle safety area. And this increase of the knowledge makes them more aware about the crashworthiness and vehicle safety. And the consumers want, wanted to have more safer cars. And when marketing teams discovered this customer behavior, with some kind of investigations in the market, they tried to put their success in terms of crashworthiness tests in their advertisements. You, may, you might be aware about in the beginning of uh, 2000s, uh, there are lots of advertisements about Volvo cars, like our cars are five stars in, in terms of urine cap, and we are building all the safest cars in the world. So this makes consumer more and more, uh, let's say, trust the brand. And also this, this tries to begin, this began to be a customer satisfaction during accidents not to have uh, a loss in, in their, not to have a loss in their. I guess this is all for the vehicle attributes perspective, why crashworthiness is located regulatory and moved to customer satisfaction area. It's still on having in two different areas, on the, not only for satisfaction, customer satisfaction area, but also still on the regulatory. So I would like to show something else about the regulatory and also external testing and insurance testing areas today, uh, because it's very important to learn the test standards. 
So we can distribute into three. We can start with the regulatory perspective, and afterwards we can go on with the new car assessment programs as a public domain guidelines. And on the other hand, it, as a last item, we can go on with the insurance perspective, including IHS, RCAR, TETCHM, and GDVs. With the regulatory perspective, I would like to start with the most famous ones, which is called, the first one is for uh, United States, and this is called NHTSA, which, is as a, which, which can be known as a National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. And this is the part of the one of the agencies in the US, US for the automotive industry to maintain the regulatory items of the vehicle safety issues. Because in the US, there are two agencies which are related with the regulation standards of the automotive industry. First is NHTSA, and the second one is EPA. EPA is taking care about the vehicle emissions. So in terms of crashworthiness, there is another specialized department in NHTSA, which is called FMVSS. You might be aware about that. Lots of FMVSS requirements around in terms of crashworthiness, FMVSS 301, FMVSS 216, 214, and other stuff. Um, and this is called Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. And these regulations are especially considering vehicle design, construction, performance, crashworthiness, and durability of the motor vehicles and automotive safety related components. You can reach uh, there from this link. And so the next item in terms of regulatory is UN ECE. You might hear about that ECR regulations like EC100, like EC95, like EC94. And this is for United Nations Economic Commissions for the Europe. And this provides the sustainable uh, transportation and regulates the all te technological innovations of the vehicles and trying to make them safer and more environmentally in the Europe. So it can be reached out from that link. So you can discover here in the case of more information, please let us know. We can provide more detailed webinars in terms of each, each kind of regulatory testing standards. So I would like to go on with the external safety agencies as well. We can call lots of new car assessment protocols in terms of different markets and countries and also geographical uh, locations. But I would like to mention as a first there is an agency called Global NCAP, which is Global New Car Assessment Protocol. And this platform wants to cooperate with among new car assessment programs worldwide. This is located in the UK. This is not making their self-regulations, but would like to make the vehicle and the automotive industry adopted universally. What this Global NCAP includes? This global NCAP includes different kinds of NCAP programs, and these NCAP programs are all located in different areas and geographical locations. Let me explain it them in details. So I would like to start with the NCAP. It's, it's for Australian areas. We may call it Australasia consumers. It gives independent and transport, transparent advice for the consumers and would like to inform each consumer in terms of comparison of the vehicle brands. So it's not only advising uh, occupants, but also advising the pedestrian protection information and for the uh, different kinds of mod uh, model brands. The next item will be the Asian NCAP and it, it is for Southeast Asian countries, and it, it has been founded in 2012. It includes adult and child equipment protection. It provides safety level of information of the tested vehicle to the consumers. Its aim is to make the consumers more familiar with the crash and the vehicle safety standards. You can reach, it, reach out these items from this website. 
Okay, you can reach it from this website. There are all results of the vehicles are included in here and you can investigate and discover this area by yourself. So you can take a look at your company brand and you can select your one of the models that you would like to and then search it. So the next item is gonna be the Chinese NCAP. I guess now I'm showing my presentation again and Chinese NCAP is related with the, of course, Chinese market and has been released in 2006. It helps to improve Chinese automotive industry with some kind of quality levels of the vehicle safety. And after this release of the Chinese NCAP, it has been observed that there are lots of vehicle safety items are being implemented to the Chinese auto, uh, automotive industry. So there are seatbelt reminders which were not in their cars and some kind of electronic stability control programs was implemented and also they improved the vehicle design to put some kind of additional airbag to protect the occupants during crash. So this means Chinese NCAP is very important and also very helpful to develop the automotive vehicle industry in China. From the beginning of it, it's, it can be easily seen that the Chinese auto industry is improved in terms of vehicle design and vehicle safety. So you can see it. Let me click on the link and show it to you. So the website of the Chinese NCAP looks like this one. So you can, sorry about that, it's Chinese, but I may try something else in terms of English version. Maybe it's more helpful. So you can reach all the companies, brands and car models from here. And it helps you to understand uh, what kind of uh, results are happening in the Chinese market. I guess this one is the most famous one that everyone, every auto customer knows it. This is called Uraincap, and Uraincap is located for Europe, but some kind of, let's say, countries which are not included in the, or located in Europe, but also takes the similar requirements of the Uraincap and accepts them. So Uraincap is, let's say, very important for the car development. As I told you previously, the familiarity of the consumer has began with the crashworthiness after late 1990s, which is the publishment of the Uraincap Corporation. Uraincap published in 1996 and they published their first test results at 1997. So what the aim of this organization is, they would like to influence the vehicle designs and leading to fewer traffic deaths on European roads. And it has been supported by different kind of members uh, from Germany, from UK, and from different kinds of Netherlands, from different kinds of European countries as Netherlands and France. So you can directly look at these members in their website. So let me look at their website and share it with you. So it's very simple. Uh, you can see your car, you can click on it and you can see detailed test and assessment knowledge in here, which includes the tested model, body types and other stuff. And it has also the test results of it. And you can see directly what the information what the required information for you. So on the other hand, for engineers, for developers and designers perspective, I would like to show a location which is called protocols of the UN cap. You can follow it and you can take a look at in here what the upcoming items also get, uh, will be uh, get into the industry in the close future because Uraincap is not testing and uh, assessing the current cars. They would like to give a vision to the automotive industry 
and they would like to make them ready before they are going to publish their protocols. So it's a good area about to see the current ones, upcoming ones, currently nothing, because they already published their 2025 roadmap, I guess. So therefore, nothing in here. It's also good to see that the previous and past uh, regulations and protocol, not regulations, sorry, protocols of the Uranium Cap in here. So you can click on one of them and take a look about what is included in here and what would like to understand and uh, reshape your development process in terms of vehicle crash burdens. I would like to go on with the Japanese NCAP. It's, it's again similar to the previous test standards and test agencies. It's again an external safety agency and it also conducts comparison tests and publish them as well. So you can reach them out from this link and would like to show what it looks like. So it includes new car assessment, child seat assessment, and automatic accident emergency call system. So you can download each protocols from here and you can see the assessment and result of your cars from this section. The next item is going to be the Korean NCAP. Again, it assesses the safety level of the motor vehicles in terms of crash performance. And they would like to improve the car manufacturers, design conditions and processes for safer cars. You can reach out to them from this link. So the, the, the other item is for Latin America and Caribbean countries, and it is called Latin NCAP. And this is the ratings between zero and five stars. It has the target of the protect adults and child equipment injuries. And also it has been started in 2010 and it aims to encourage manufacturers to improve the safety performance of the vehicles. You can reach them out from this web link, assessment of the preferred car with the different kind of model years and other stuff. The next item is the US NCAP. This is the new car assessment program for the United States. It's also another important department of the ITSA to inform the consumers. And it helps to reduce the motor vehicle crash related deaths and injuries in the United States market and follows FMVSS and the other regulations. And they are targeting to educate the consumers about vehicle safety. On the other hand, they would like to support the manufacturers to provide vehicles to meet federal safety requirements like FMVSS targets. So you can reach them out from www.safercar dot co. So let me share it, what it looks like as well. So you can see some kind of information here and they, they are also very good at the recalls of the uh, vehicles and the components. So you can take a look at vehicle owners area and would like to get in more uh, let's say informed about the car safety and vehicle safety in here. 